my speech and my preaching, he says in verse 4, were not with persuasive words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power that your faith would not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. See, look at me. I'm going to go after you. I think you're miserable. I think your life is broken. I think that you suffer every day from a loneliness that is eaten up at you even when you're around people. I believe that everything that wokeness touches loses its color, its vitality, and its innocence. You learn to feel like a victim. You learn to be offended by everything around you. You learn to be suspicious of everyone and everything until finally you're eaten up inside. This is why, look at me, do you think that I feel inferior? Do you think that I feel like an intellectual victim? Listen, I would love to have a date with your professor any day. Those bullies need to pick on somebody their own size. Let me at them. Let them bring up whatever garbage they want. Let them do their intellectual double talk. But the fact of the matter is in all the California awareness, it is bred anger, it is bred perversion, it is, prevented, it is created misery, agony. Even your body language confirms what I'm saying right now. The defensiveness, the need to hoard and hold on to yourself, the need to find somebody, two things that wokeness finds and looks for, what to fear and who to blame. Paul said, it drained the life out of me. So I picked the one message. Here's the danger that Mario Murillo faces. Here's the danger. I can address a lot of different subjects. I've studied history. I have preached in universities. I have lectured and taught in upper division university classes. All of those $40 words, I know them. And not having known them, the thrill is gone. And I can use plain language. Paul the Apostle said, Seeing we have such great hope, we use great plainness of speech. Now let me talk to you for a moment. He said, I only wanted to know one thing about you, that Christ died for you. It's the only thing that identifies you. It's why you're not an evolutionary accident that crawled out of the primordial soup. It's why you are a woman or a man. And everything else is just theoretical. And I want you to look at me. You can tell me about how unique and special your pain is. How justified your experimentation against decency is. But I don't need to tell you you're going to hell. I don't need to. That's one thing I've learned in California. You don't really need to spend a lot of time telling people who are already in hell that they're going to hell because it's hellish in our neighborhood. It's hellish in our schools. It's hellish on the job. And so you'll run up to Tahoe and ski, but the misery follows you down the slope. You wake up and you chant all sorts of things, but at the end of the day, you look in the mirror and you're a lost soul, separated. You don't know why you were born. You don't know why you're here. You don't know what's going on. And Paul said, I cannot compete with the temple prostitute and the immorality. I can't keep up with it all. And I pity the pastors that are continually studying culture to try to be relevant. Because you're going to be trapped in that the rest of your life. You will never keep up with it. You'll never be up to date. So Paul got alone with Jesus. Are you serious about me building a church in Corinth? 
of taking the raw material of people who have not one glimpse of Christian DNA and turning them into something special. Making people with hearts of gold, minds that are clear, bodies that are healthy, a sense of peace and purpose. You want me to do that, Jesus? You want me to do it in Corinth? To take the raw of the raw and transform them? And when he heard yes, that's when he started praying like this. I don't want to say anything that doesn't carry power. What I need, Jesus, is to understand. Look at me. If I were to ask anyone to take notes on anything I'd ever say, it'd be this part right here. It's to see your audience as an emotional, intellectual hand puppet under the control of an outside force. And what signs and wonders and miracles do is it takes the hand out of the puppet. It takes the control off the mind. And suddenly tears begin to flow. We watched it last night. I looked over to my left. There was a young woman over here. And the Spirit of God revealed to me her story. And it was terrible. She had been abused from childhood on. I could tell. She stood there and I knew what she was doing for the first time. It is the moral equivalent of somebody who is paralyzed that suddenly feels pain in their toes and is rejoicing because it is a sign that movement is going to come back. She was standing there. She began to cry and sob openly and cry out to God and know that she was going from being a merchandised object into a pure daughter of the living God. Somebody help me right now. So Paul said, I need power. You have got to do some things while I'm preaching. The first thing I want you to do is break the atmosphere. You wonder, why do we worship? I don't like a lot of the Christian worship of today. I don't. I'm not going to get into it. Why should I make you mad? But I don't like it because I believe it is selfish. I believe it's oriented toward the artist and the audience getting a buzz. Used to be that we worship used to make us overcome by God. Now it just makes us overcome. And God isn't at the center of it. But the kind of worship that I want breaks chains, releases the mind, puts the sinner under conviction, and starts to awaken in them yearnings that they have never felt in years. I can be innocent again. I can be safe again. We need miracles because millennials are now beyond words. No debate, no argument. It is possible that I could go and study and read the great Christian apologist and take a surgical scalpel to modern philosophy. I could do it. I could literally stand here and dismantle the lies of this generation. And I would win the argument, but I would lose the soul. I'm not here to win the argument. I'm here to win the soul. I'm here to win you to God. I'm here to get you out of something into something. 